Hi everyone, and welcome to Restoration Quick Bits. On today's subject, we're gonna do some quick stabilization, maybe some of the flickering to try to fix the shot to make it work. So, here we go. This was a 16 millimeter film. This was a shot in the jungle uh, around the 60s, 70s. It's quite unstable. You can see it's really damaged. Uh, we have a lot of dust, uh, a lot of flickering, uh, a lot of waviness. So, what can we do? So if we try doing like normal stabilization stuff like uh, DBO Steady, it wouldn't work properly. So we need to do something a bit more uh, nuanced. So one of the new tools that Phoenix has is called uh, DBO Frame Lock. What DBO Frame does is gonna create a zone with an ROI that's gonna determine exactly what's the reference for the stabilization for the whole picture. So, better see it in action. So, if I apply here the video frame lock, um, right from the get go, it's going to start doing something. So, let's press play. So, from the get go, we can see, um, I mean, the image is a bit better, but since the whole frame is moving really, really well, a lot, so we cannot really set up a, a reference here. So it's, it, would be, it would be better if we, if we contain the picture. We use like a smaller reference, not the whole frame, but just a, just a part of it. So what we can do is go to the DBO frame log settings. Here we can set, a, set up an ROI and we can see that it matches, um, I wouldn't say completely the frame, but as, as much of the frame as possible. So let's do here, this, and this. So I try to do this with the, with the source uh, footage, not, not with the render file, because it's gonna, probably if we're working with the render file, it's gonna be, um, you're gonna be having a, a lot of background rendering, so it's gonna be quite harder for you to hit the mark. So it's better to, to do the settings on the source and then try to fix that once it's, once you have it all in the correct place or all in the place that you want. So right now I already activated and um, as we can see the image is still moving. I mean it's a bit better but it's still moving so what other thing that we can do is here uh, maybe we can adjust this here at the beginning. Let's see if that works out. Uh, it's a bit better, just at the end we can see some kind of movement. Yeah, we can, we can fix that, we can fix that in another way, I'm gonna show you that. So, uh, another, another interesting thing I will, I will say, one of the best features that DBO Frame Lock has is that we have these outside and inside frame to toggles, uh, buttons here. So what, what each of these does is that when, we, when, I turn on, when, when I turn on outside frame, it's gonna blank everything but the inside of the frame. So everything outside of the frame is gonna be blank out, black out, and everything on the inside is gonna be visible. Uh, you need to be aware because when you're doing this, this gets born into the picture. So if you leave this on and you start working on, on, on other DBOs on the stack, you may get this rendered. So you need to be aware, this is only for reference, unless you wanna achieve this kind of effect. Well. Most of the time when you're working in restoration, you don't want to do this at this point, especially. So, let's continue. So you can see, yeah, um, the DBO frame now has made a good work doing the fault detection. I would say a decent job, uh, right? But next to the end, especially when we have um, this heavy movement, when the when you can see really that the print has started to, to shift. I don't know, maybe this was a print issue, maybe this was damage. Um, we don't really know. We don't have any information about uh, the process that this film went through, so we don't really know about that. But the uh, fact of the matter is that, um, yeah, we have this. So what else can we do? So we have a lot of, I um, would say, settings here that could be really useful. So we can set up the safety. At the moment, the safety is, is at 50%. So this, the safety of 50% is gonna not, it's gonna prevent the DBO frame lock to do some really, really heavy movements or we'll say like violent movements. 
But in, in this particular case, I want it to be as aggressive as possible. So I'm gonna reduce the safety to zero. Mm, some of your footage, when you do this, you're gonna be creating some type of really uh, noticeable jumps. Okay, I need to turn it on. And I think it's working really good, except for this particular place. Okay, what else can we do? Another thing that we can do is that we have some toggles here. Well, I would say some drop down menus here that says uh, analysis pre filter. So this is gonna do some type of pre, um, pre filtering before the DBO framework starts using it. It's not gonna render that, it's just gonna use that for detection. So um, by default, it comes with the grain low to the dust low and the scratch disabled. So let's try doing, uh, we'll say, try to increase the dust because probably where we have more heat is the dust, not the grain. So maybe we can go to high. And uh, let's check that. Let's check this. High or medium. Uh, that's not really working. So let's start with grain. Maybe go into medium or high is gonna do anything. No, not really. But maybe what we can we do here is to increase the size of the detection. I mean, that's gonna yield a better result. Maybe, maybe. This is all trial and error. This is why all films have a different settings, different thresholds. You cannot set it to be the same in everything. So I think I managed to get a decent result I just need it to be a bit more precise at the end. So let me try to do that, especially doing this. Okay, let me check. Okay, no, no, that didn't work out. I need some more of the borders here. So what else can I do? What is the big jump? We need to find that. Yeah. Okay. So here we have a big jump. Maybe this one is gonna fix everything. Hopefully. I think it did. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a stable shot. So in the end, we have achieved, uh, I would say, a decent result, or more than functional result. So we have here, this is the, you have the end file, the end, the output on the left and the original on the right. Another way to see it would be better here using the dual output. I'm gonna disable the scope so you can see it better and go to control tab so you can see it fully. So you can see the difference that I mean, yeah, um, I mean, one of the good things about frame block is that you, you get to keep the original intent of the shot, even if the, it was on purpose or not. I mean by that, that it, if at the moment that this was shot and the cameraman didn't have a, a good tripod, uh, it was using a zoom lens, or any type of issue about, I would say, instability that came from the source, that came from the camera, gets preserved by, by frame lock. So it's really different of using, I would say, um, a content-based stabilizer, like uh, a stabilization method, like um, Steady, DBO Steady, or the ones that you find in Resolve or in any, any, any NLE. So it's really different. You, we are using only the borders. We are using only the information that is gonna try to to, fix, to to stabilize the frame. Only the frame, we don't care about the content. Content could be moving at around, oh no, it could be a, a lot of horses running. We don't care. We're gonna just focus on stabilizing the frame. So that's it for today. I hope uh, you can join me on the next one. So hopefully this becomes something more of a, something like I do a bit faster uh, than a long form video. That's on the making, but this is, I think, a solution. So see you then. Don't forget to get your two week trial of Phoenix. 
And if you need any type of training, send us an email to the address in the description. Bye-bye.